Hey guys, this is Anthony Morganti from OnlinePhotographyTraining.com. Welcome to my video series, Mastering Lightroom Classic CC. This is probably going to be the shortest video in the video series as we take a look at the one tool we've yet to look at, and that is the Red Eye Correction Tool. It is the third tool from the left in the tool well, and as you can see, it looks like kind of a freaky looking robotic eye. So, when you have an image of a human, a pet, or in this case a wild animal, that has red eye and you most often get red eye when you use flash and for this image I used a flash and to tell you the truth I took this image a long time ago so I'm not really sure where I had the flash positioned but I must have had the flash very close to the camera on level with the lens so that the light from the flash reflected off the eye of the chipmunk and went back into the lens and it came up with this red eye. So you could get rid of it with the red eye removal tool. So we'll open the tool and you can see it has two buttons, one for red eye and one for pet eye. Optional which one you use for this animal. Uh, it's not a pet, but it is not a person either. So we could use either. So I'm going to use pet eye, but I'm going to demonstrate both. Um, we want to zoom in. I have the tool open. So to zoom in, hold the space bar in, then click on the image and we'll be able to zoom in. And you could see that the tool itself is kind of this circle with these little guides all around it. So what you'd like to do is you'd like to make the tool um, just the same size as the eye of the person, animal, or rodent that you want to remove the red from. And what you will find often is that it will not get small enough, uh, particularly when you're using the uh, pet eye tool. If I was able to get this small enough, I could simply just click and hopefully it would take care of it. But because it can't get small enough, what we're going to do is put the little crosshairs right in the middle of the chipmunk's eye, click with the left mouse button and hold in, then drag out. And as I drag out, you'll see those guides come out. And if I move to the right horizontally or left horizontally, I'm kind of moving those left and right guides. And if I move up or down, I'm moving the top or bottom guides. So what you want to do is you want those guides to be perfectly fitting on the eye, not just the pupil of the eye, the entire eye. So that is roughly right about there. Then you let go with the left mouse button and you'll see this happen. Now, we have a couple choices with pet eye. We have a slider for pupil size, and we have catch light. You can see that tiny little light right there. If I click this off, it goes away, and then we look like we have a zombie rodent. And then when it's on, it looks a little more alive. You're able to move that catch light around. You can see that there's a little circle there, and I could drag it. So I could move the catch light like way back there, or I could move the catch light towards the front, wherever. I can move it anywhere in the eye. Now I could reposition the whole effect by not going on that middle part, but just going off that middle part. And then I could move everything around. You could see now I could better center the tool or the overlay so that it is right in the middle. And I will point out down here on the toolbar, and if you're not seeing this toolbar, that it's this piece of uh, real estate that is directly below the image, hit the T key on your keyboard. It turns that toolbar off and on. There is one function down here. It's the drop down that is available for um, most of the tools. It is the tool overlay and I have it set to auto. So we see the overlay when I'm on the image and when I come off it's not there. And we have all the typical choices you have with all the tools. We could have it always show, selected show if I had a uh, rodent or a person or whatever with two eyes showing in the image and they both needed to be corrected, I would obviously have two tools. Or if I had a group of people, I would have two or three or four overlays showing and I'd be able to then only have the selected 
overlay showing at any one time or never. And you could hit the H key on your keyboard. The H key will toggle the overlay basically off or to auto mode. And I prefer auto mode. So we have this centered on the eye, but we have this pupil size slider. So I could kind of bring that out so it kind of looks ridiculous or bring it in. Then come back in here and reposition again by going outside of the center circle. Move the catch light around so it looks more natural. And hopefully that would work out. I could zoom back out with the tool open by holding in the shift key and then clicking again and we'll zoom back out. And you can see at this distance it doesn't look too bad. It's in my finding that the red eye removal tool, pet eye removal tool, doesn't always give realistic effect, realistic effect no matter how hard you try. So you do the best you can. So we have this with the pet eye. Now I'm going to show you that it is slightly different when you use the red eye tool. So we're going to come in here and I'm going to drag it over this way, holding the space bar in as I do it. And I'm going to delete this. So I'm just hitting the delete key and we'll go to the red eye tool. And the red eye tool works similarly. You would um, use the left bracket key to make it smaller, right bracket key to make it larger. And you may have noticed that it was perfectly sized until I hit those bracket keys because it remembers your last setting. So it keeps that sized the way it was because usually the images are on an image, the eyes would be similar sized. So that would help you save some time. So we're just gonna click on the middle. It gets applied the same way. We click in the middle and drag out. Again, we go horizontally to move the outside ones and vertically to move those uh, vertical ones and vertical handles and horizontal handles. And when you're satisfied, you have it about right. You just let go and you can see now it does that. Well, a couple little things here. We do not have a checkbox for the catch light. So the catch light is there. You can't really do much about it. We're just going to click on now and reposition it so it's more in the center. But you can see we have this darken slider which is available to us. We could darken it down or lighten it up. So we could kind of blend it so it hopefully looks more natural. And we also have that same pupil size tool. So we could adjust that so it looks more natural. So we could move around again with this and try to get it centered, um, darken it up as needed. And then we'll zoom back out. I'll hold the shift key in and click on the image to zoom back out. And you can see that might not look quite as good as the pet eye version, but it's really hard to say. It's, it's really, I guess, maybe really personal preference. Um, the reason why I don't think it works as well, we kind of have a double catch light there and I don't think that looks realistic. But in this case, you could try both. I would recommend you do try both and see which works uh, best for you. In the case of this rodent, I think the pet eye worked a little better. And that's really all there is to applying the tool. There's really not any little cheap shortcuts we could do by holding in shift keys and and holding in command keys or option keys or control keys. It's just pretty much lay it on there. Move the, in the case of the red eye tool, move the two sliders around and hopefully you get it to kind of look correct. In the case of the pet eye tool, you only have the pupil uh, size slider. Move that around, but you do have the catch light slider that you could use and then move that catch light around to help it look a little more natural. And I think, I do think in the case of of this guy that the pet eye tool does work much better. So we're gonna hold that shift key in again and click on the image and zoom out. Of course, I could just close the tool down then I could zoom in and out and that actually doesn't look very good at all. So I could come back in, open the tool, zoom in, make sure the tool selected by clicking on it. And then I could come in here and maybe try to make it look a little better and still doesn't look quite right but you could play with it like I said it's been my experience it doesn't always work that great so you just try to use it the best you can your best bet is when you take the image 
make sure that the flash that you're using isn't at lens height and in the same plane as the lens. So you're not shooting directly at your subject and allowing the opportunity for the light to bounce off their eyes and come back right into the lens of the camera and get that weird effect. You'd prefer to have your uh, light up higher or off to the side, and that will eliminate the possibility of having red eye. Also, with most modern flashes, it has a red eye feature in that it will send out a pre-burst of light to dilate the subject's pupil just enough so that it will minimize the effect of red eye. So utilize any of those functions when you take the picture and hopefully you avoid this situation. That's it for this video. Thank you everyone that watches my videos. I truly do appreciate it. I'll talk to you guys soon.